A prayer to ask for God's guidance. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Our head is too small to lead us, our wisdom is too shallow to guide us. Anyone who wishes to be successful in life must be led and guided by the Lord. The Bible says that as many that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Divine guidance therefore qualifies us to be the children of God indeed. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I bless you, Holy Name, for your leading and guidance over my life in the past. Thank you, Lord, because your leadership has never led me into error. Thank you, Lord, because your ways are the path of life, and everyone that walks therein find rest for their soul. The path of the Lord is true. It leads to safety. The ways of the Lord are pure. They lead to glorious destination. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit, which you have given to us as your children to lead us in the right path and to give us safe counsels at every time of need. You are my comforter and guide. Holy Spirit, please help me with these cares. You know them better than I. You know what needs to happen, and I will trust you. I thank you, Lord, for the voice of the Holy Spirit, which continually speaks to us, guiding us into all truth. I recognize your power and greatness. I am humbled that you love me and that you bid me to bring my cares to you. Dear Lord, in any way I have refuted the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in times past, I repent and I ask for your mercy. Please forgive me and pardon my sins. I repent of every act of disobedience I have ever exhibited to the instructions of the Holy Spirit, and I make a commitment to turn a new leaf, Lord. I ask, dear Father, that you help me henceforth to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit from every other voices and help me to act in prompt and total obedience to him according to your word in John chapter 10, verse 2 to 5, which reads, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. In Jesus' name, I refuse to follow strange voices henceforth. My discernment is enhanced, and I will not be deceived. According to your word in Psalms 25, verse 4 to 5, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Lord, I understand that your ways are sometimes strange to us and that we may not fully understand your paths. But I still insist that you take me through your ways, for the end of your path, O Lord, leads to safety. Teach me how to obediently follow your leading, O Lord, Help me to put my total trust in your instructions. My wisdom will fail me, and my strength is too weak to help me. Therefore, I will trust in your guidance. Lord, lead me on. Your word says, Be still, and know that I am God. Lord, as I am still, I acknowledge that you are God, and that it's you who holds my future in your hands. Lord, like David, I make you my shepherd, lead me wherever you will. There is no want for as many that follows your guidance. Without your Spirit, Lord, I will not know where to go. So guide me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Guide every footstep I take today. Lead to on the path 
of righteousness. Dear Father, guide my steps. May I never go where you will not go with me. Guide my tongue. May I never say anything outside what you want me to say. And guide my actions. May I never do anything that is not in alignment with your divine will and purpose for my life. Lord, help me to know when it is right for me to speak or act, and help me to maintain quietness and silence at the appropriate time. Lord, according to your word in James chapter 1, verse 5, I ask for your wisdom to know what I ought to do per time. Let your wisdom be my daily guide in Jesus' name. I refuse to run my life into error, and I reject to ruin my destiny by taking a wrong counsel in Jesus' name. You are faithful. When I am faithless, you remain faithful. Your patience is full and rich. Your love runs deep. Let your presence surround me, Lord, all throughout my day. Dear Heavenly Father, grant me the experience of the Israelites in Exodus, chapter 13, verse 21 to 22, which reads, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. To go by day and night, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Go before me, Lord. Let your light brighten my path and cause my enemies walk in darkness. As I enter this day, I have problems I do not want to face alone. You say that you have sent a helper to be with me always. Sometimes I can't sense your presence or see you working. Please help me have faith to trust you in those times and to lean into you with these struggles. Please, Lord, never withhold your presence from me all the days of my life. I do not want to be the one going before you. Lord, go before me and let me follow after. I trust in you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. The pillar of fire which journeyed with the Israelites in the Old Testament is a symbolism of the Holy Spirit, which is to guide and lead the believers in the New Testament. Holy Spirit, I hereby embrace your ministry as a guide sent from heaven. Lead me in all my way so that I will not stumble in darkness. Open my eyes to see what you will have me do and the steps you will me take, O Lord. In Jesus' name. I have prayed. Amen. God keeps us in His hands. John 10, 28 and 29 And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Every time I am faced with some terrible situation in my life, when things become unsolvable and when things are pushing me to seek alternatives, I always remember these verses from the Bible. You and I are in the hand of God. God will never leave you. He will never let you out of His sight. Isn't that wonderful? I am personally tired of human love. I'm personally tired of the love of a man or woman. You see people walking down the aisle and they say vows to one another. They say for better and for worse. But when worse comes, they leave. You see children who, who once used to love and hug and kiss their mothers when they were young, mistreat and even steal from that same mother years later. The love of mankind can change, but the love of God Almighty will remain the same. His love for you will never change. The love of God is not based on your performance. It is not based upon the color of your skin. It is not based on your height, weight, complexion. It is not based on whether you do something for God or not. God simply and truly loves you simply because 
He loves you. This should give us joy at all times. This should make you boast that you were loved by Christ and you were held firmly in His hands. This was why Paul could boast about not going away from the love of God, which could also read the hand of God. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Paul was sure that none of these things could take him out of the hands of God. You see, these people had faced many challenges. They had gone through a series of storms. They had been publicly disgraced. They had been persecuted in many ways. But because they knew the hands of God, they knew they couldn't go away from them. If you know God and you know that you are in His hands, nothing you are faced with in this life will be able to phase you. I want to ask you, are you in the hands of God? Is God holding you firmly? Can you say you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty? Don't deceive yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You know if you are in the hands of God or not. God said this to His people in a time when they had gone away from Him. Maybe they assumed that the hands of God were short to save them. But they did not know that they were not even in the hands of God. God had to make it clear in Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. Don't expect God to save you if you are not in His hands. I'm not trying to make you feel like God has condemned you or God will not care for you. I just want you to know the truth and that you need to be in the hands of God. I just want you to know that the hands of God are what will save you. You need to put yourself in His hands. Placing yourself in God's hands requires humility. It requires a person acknowledging that they can't guide and order their own life. It requires a person acknowledging God as the director of their lives. You cannot be running away from His hands and still be asking Him to save you. That doesn't make sense. Check your life. Stop complaining about God not helping you. Are you helping yourself by putting yourself into the hands of God? Psalm 121 verses 4 through 8. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. If you are in the hands of God, the Lord will keep preserving your soul and keep your going out and coming in. It doesn't matter the level of evil happening in the world. Do you know what God says again? Psalm 91 verses 5 through 10. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. This is the word of the Lord to everyone who is in his hands. I want to ask you again, where do you want to be? Paul said nothing can separate them from that love. Nothing can remove them from the hands of God. He has tested this place, and he found that it was a good place and the best place to be. Paul was once a killer. He persecuted people, but he left this zone and went into the hands of God. Now, he knew how the sin zone was. 
and how the hand of God was to him. And he decided that nothing can separate him from that hand of God. If you are still running around looking for where to be or the right hand to stay in, you are wasting your time. If you are not running to God and staying in Him when this world is in a perilous time, you're wasting your time. Sin is the major thing that will keep coming to remove you from the hands of God. Sin will always come from the devil. There is no way you can escape temptations. They will always come, but you need to behave like someone who is in the hand of God. You need to use the strength of God, the Word of God, the power of God to overcome these temptations that will just keep coming. Jesus has assured us that nothing can snatch us away from the hands of God. If anyone or anything wants to try that, they must fight God first. God is all-powerful and nothing can overcome Him. All of this is because of His love for us. He loved us and He loves us. It cannot stop. Even when you don't deserve it because of sin, He will still love you. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. This love is real. This love takes us from darkness into light. This love gives us life. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are outside of Christ, if you are not in the hands of Christ yet, don't lie to yourself. Are you enjoying it out there? Are you enjoying life with no security? Are you enjoying life with no hope? Are you enjoying a life with burdens that can make you depressed? When you are in the hands of Christ, you have joy. It doesn't matter what is going on in the world. Joy will always be yours because you know you have life and you will make it to heaven. There are blessings in the hands of God. If you want them, you need to get them by staying in Christ.